in all thy sons command. Senator Nancy Ruth says something is missing from that line in our national anthem, namely the daughters. So she's launched a campaign to have both genders included in the lyrics of O Canada. Senator Nancy Ruth joins us now to tell us more about that campaign. Welcome and welcome back to the agenda. It's been some Thank time. You. Nice to have you here. Okay, so back in the fall, you and uh, some other women get together. You decide to launch this campaign. Why? Because it was the 100th anniversary of the change. Most people don't know, but the original anthem in 1908 said, Thou dost in us command. The original English anthem. The original English anthem. And all we're asking for is that the in us be put back, because it was changed in 1913. It was just before the First World War. We can't prove it was done because they were recruiting soldiers, but we can't disprove it either. The suffragette movement was also going on at the same time, so maybe the guy, the judge who wrote it, sort of said, oh, we'll write women out. We have no idea historically why, but the change happened in 1913, and it's time 100 plus one years to change it back. Okay, who else are you working with? Who, who, who's on Margaret this campaign? Atwood, Kim Campbell, Sally Goddard, who's the mother of Captain Nicola Goddard, who was the first woman who came back from Afghanistan in a body bag. Uh, she was killed in combat, for, she, the first woman it, soldier killed in combat. Yeah, and you know what? There are thousands of women who just have for years been singing it. And often they're women close to my age. Um, you talked a little bit about the history. The French anthem it was 1880, 19, early 20th century, the English uh, lyrics. When we go back to, to prior to the change to 1913, do you know why those words were chosen originally? In 1908? Yeah. The original words, no, I don't know. And uh, it was a, you know, Canada didn't have a national, national anthem then at all. When I went to school, we were singing the Maple Leaf Forever and God Save the King and then the Queen. And so, uh, you know, it wasn't until 1980 that we actually got a National Anthem Act. But the, uh, you know, this judge sat down and decided that it was a good tune and he was going to write English <laughs> words to it. And he was in Montreal. So he was familiar with the uh, French anthem and the French words. Okay, in your promotional video on your website, um, there's this part in it where you suggest that people might be saying, why now? Why do we need the change now? Doesn't our government have more important things to do? Um, shouldn't we be focusing on other things? So I want to ask you the same question. Why do you think it's important to do it now? Well, it, when we started the campaign last fall, it was 100 years, and it was a good, it just seemed like a good reason to do it. It should have been done years ago, and it needs to be done now. I mean, here I am watching the Olympics every day and watching those wonderful women and men winning medals for us and thinking, why do those women stand on a stand where the national anthem doesn't include them? I mean, it's ridiculous. Why don't you think the change was, someone tried to make the change years ago? Uh, while there have been, I think, five attempts in Parliament to uh, change the Act and they just haven't passed, either because there's been dissolutions or one thing or another. But, and there may be one again this year. I'm not sure whether the private member's bill is coming forward, but I suspect it may well be. I guess when you look back and you see five attempts, five failures, if I can call them back, I mean, what do you read into that, that, that there hasn't been this political will, this impetus to want to change this? Well, most of Parliament's controlled by men. We know that. But here, here are you and I. Two women with living in a country, contributing to a country in our various ways with an anthem that doesn't include us. How st stupid is that? And you know what? Really, I just want once before I die, which is going to be in 10 or 15 years, to hear, oh, Canada, with women and girls included. There's 17 million of us in this country. When you sing it, do you sing those words? What of do you course. Do? Almost every woman I know my age d does, and that's what the campaign is about. Don't worry about the politicians. Just sing it in all of us. So you, you don't sing the, 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 the official words. Every time you sing it, you say, in all of us. You're standing there in a crowd of people, and you say, in all of us. I do it every Wednesday in caucus. What do people say to you? Uh, they stop saying anything. Well, what did they say to you? I mean, what, I'm curious about what kind of reaction you got. They groan. Some of the guys in caucus groan, some of the guys, you know, most of them just let it go. I think everybody knows this is a no-brainer. It's just sometimes difficult to do. People talk about tradition, but they don't understand tradition is change. 
because it's been changed so many times in the past, the national anthem. People sometimes who complain forget that we have women soldiers dying in combat. They forget we have women and Olympians and para-Olympians that are winning for Canada. We have all those wonderful CETA workers out in Afghanistan that are so often forgotten in our work around the world. We have women teachers, we engineers, business women, you know. I, and again, I, I guess I go back to Nancy then, if, if it's a no-brainer, here we are, 2014, we're still saying, in all thy sons command. Well, let's change it. Let's just sing, in all of us command. There are uh, people who, who might say, you know, in, in, in the fight for equality, in, in terms of women's issues, there are bigger issues. We should be fighting for things like equality in the workplace. But this is a symbolic change. What would you say to that? I'd say they're right. But this is part of a package. Language, you know, is the power of... There was a, an American nun called Rosemary Radford Ruther who in the 70s said, language is the power of the ruling class to define reality in its own terms and make invisible all others. And I never forgot that as I was growing up in the 70s and 80s in this country. And so that's why language is important. You know, we've got the budget coming down this week, and I have asked for $1 billion in new housing monies to go to second stage housing for women. That's just as important as singing a national anthem that includes us. They're all important, and they don't, one doesn't go without the other. They're part of a whole package. Curious, beyond the hill, what's been the reaction to your campaign so far? Thank God you're doing it. Keep on, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of encouragement. Oh, yes. You heard from the naysayers? Uh, well, I have a file about that thick from the last time we went around this one. You have a file that thick. What are people saying? Uh, pretty awful things. Mm. What's the biggest complaint that you can tell us on air that people say? I, most of them I can't tell on air. Hmm. They're rude, they're abusive, they're part of the violence against women. How does that make you feel? I mean, here you are trying to fight for a change in language that is part, as you say, of a campaign of women's rights, and yet in 2014 in Canada, you're getting, I don't, I don't want to call it hate mail, maybe it is hate mail, but people saying, you know what, women aren't equal, in, in, at least not in our anthem, we don't think we should change it. How does that make you feel? Sorry. Um, everybody knows women, girls. Why would you want your granddaughters not to have an anthem that includes you? I mean, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Are you hearing from a a any women who don't want this change, or are you hearing mostly from men? It's mostly from men. Occasionally it's from women. Um, often they've had people related to the armed forces. And I think it's uh, just they sort of haven't caught up hmm. at the fact there are tons of women in the uh, armed forces right now. Tons of them. Do you think, um, I mean, I, I guess my other question is, is this divided along generational lines? Is there, a, you know, a generation that cares about changing this and a generation that can, young feminists saying we've got other battles to fight? Yes, our statistics show that it's usually older white men who are resistant. Uh, people under 35 are just sort of like, what's the issue? Mm. Do it. So there is a generational gap, and the, mo the biggest resistance is from that group. You are on the Hill a lot. You're a senator. What are you hearing? Does the, does the government have an official position on this uh, desire of yours to change the anthem? Uh, I don't know what the official position is. What I do know is that Mr. Harper uh, attempted to uh, have a look at this change back right after the Vancouver Olympics, and there was a bit of an outcry. So in 36 hours, it was pulled, and he doesn't want to go back through that trouble again. What I do know is that Mr. Mulcair, who came out uh, originally opposed to it, has softened, and Mr. Trudeau, as far as I know, has not said anything, which is positive. If any one of them want to take this and make the change? How, I mean, how do we change our national anthem? What's the process it has to go through? Uh, it's a simple change the National Anthem Act. It's an amendment. It needs to be introduced in the House? Yes, it needs to go in the House and then pass in the Senate and the Governor General signs it. It's, it's really quite simple to do. Simple to do, and yet, sixth attempt now, perhaps, might not happen. Well, we're, you know, Maybe. We're, we're staring at an election. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, if you think there's... Uh, depends on your polling numbers and resistance. So that's why we're so keen to have Canadians just sing it. 
So if they ever do So we any, don't need the official change. You're just no, saying raise your voice, it. just sing these other words. That's right. Two words. Two I'm words. talking word. Two words, Pia. Change thy sons to in us. Simple. Simple. We don't need to, to no. make this an official policy change. In all of us command. I mean, doesn't it say something, though, to, if, if we just did it informally, rather than trying to pressure politicians to say, you know what, this is so important to what it says about us as Canadians that we should officially change this. That's exactly right. People should control the government, and this is one way to do it. Are you hopeful that, that you actually will get the change in any official way? I don't care anymore. I don't think. You know, I've got three more years in the Senate, so if I get, get stuck in the next two years, I can introduce the bill myself. So it's not a big deal. But all I want is people to sing it. We have, we, we've had some wonderful responses uh, from Halifax to Vancouver. The Vancouver Children's so Chorus is singing it and posting it on our YouTube site. Uh, the elect, famous electric women's choir in Vancouver is doing it. A couple of choirs in Halifax. Uh, the Welsh Men's Choir here in Toronto is singing it. We've got cab drivers leaning out of their <laughs> cabs singing. Of course, do it. We just, anybody do it. We're going to have, we hope <laughs> we'll create a couple of flash mobs and get some <laughs> press out of it. We're just going to do it. All right. Which thank is the best way to do it. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for coming in. Singallofus.ca. Thanks, Thank you. Nancy. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at TVO.org.